Okey. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, ni topik tujuh. Alice. CSC116. So the events. So we will go to the introduction to the event processing and the four events that we have to know. The world events, the keyboard events, the mouse events and the condition events. So what is an event processing? So the programming paradigm that requires event interaction is called event-driven programming. So in this event-driven programming, the program execution is determined by the event. Example, you click a mouse. Okay, you click enter. You press the key, enter key on your keyboard. Okay, kalau you press apa pun, nothing happen. So, tak bermakna lah kita punya interaction with the computer, betul? Kita suruh dia tekan enter. So, therefore, it will log in into the system that we want. Tapi, dia tak jadi apa-apa. So, tak adalah nama event driven. Nama dia, dia shock sendiri, tak ada buat apa-apa. Okay. So, event is an action or occurrences, occurrence that de is detected by a program. Apa-apa yang berlaku. Okay, can be de detected by the program. That is an event. So, it can be user action. Okay, such as clicking mouse button, pressing a key. Or it can be system occurrences. Such as running out of memory. Okay, most modern application nowadays are said to be event driven because they are designed to respond to events. Let's say we uh, insert our uh, ATM card into the ATM machine. Okay, and the ATM machine will ask for a PIN number. Okay, let's say we enter PIN number but when we click OK or enter or the um, green colored icon tu, nothing happen. Nah, dia telan je pula kat kita. What happened? Ah, tu bukan interaktif lah tu. So, it is said to be event driven jika dia interaktif. Okay, dia respond to events. So, click enter. So, dia pun determine whether the pin number entered is correct or not. Kalau correct, dia teruskan. Kalau salah, dia minta kita masukkan yang baru ke. Okay. So, event is needed to be responded to execute the action. So, we need a listener. Why? Because the listener will watch for an event to be executed. Okay, and we also need the handler. What is the responsibility of the handler? Responsible for dealing with the event. So, listener ni dia tukang tengok je, tukang dengar je. So, yang handler ni dia yang akan deal. Apa yang patut buat bila berlakunya sesuatu action ataupun event tu. So, we use event handlers to listen to events. In at least three, event handler is a method. Okay, method. Function ke procedure ke. Okay, that is executed in response to an event. So, LSP provide event listener classes with event handlers, which is the method. So, event source adalah punca kepada sesuatu event tu berlaku. Okay, situasi apa yang berlaku. So, your listener, your listener ni must register to an event source. Okay, bila dah, dia dah register dah, dia dah dengar dah. Okay. So, it will get notified when the event source generate event. Okay, dia dah dengar dan dia akan diberitahu bila event, uh, sesuatu event itu berlaku. So, there are four type of event listener in at least three. Kita ada seat activation time, keyboard, mouse and position of orientation. Okay, dekat mana nak cari? Pergi cari dekat yang it at event listener. There are four types of event sources. 
So most common use event in the interactive programming are keyboard dengan mouse. Yelah, kita nak buat apa-apa, kita pergilah uh, mouse. Pakai mouse tu kan nak pergi mana. Senang kan? Terpulanglah mouse ni macam mana sekalipun. Mungkin dekat keypad tu, mungkin dekat tab, mungkin de dekat mouse ketul tu kan. Okay. And then mungkin juga dekat keyboard. A, B, C, D tu nak type macam mana? So, kena lah tekan keyboard. And then we have also a world event that allow event occurs within a scene or within a time interval. Okay. And then kita ada juga condition events where the event will occurs conditionally on condition. Okay, maybe when something becomes true, maybe the position, the orientation changes. So, dekat sini kita tengok dekat sini event apa yang biasa berlaku. Kita tekan start. Maksudnya, when the world starts, kita tekan start. Of course, immediately, the world will be started. Okay, yang ni hanya berlaku sekali sahaja bila bila kita tekan play tu, tekan start. Okay, while the world is running, meaning the event occurs as long as the world is running. When a key is typed, kita tekan apa? Enter. What happened? Kita tekan A. What happened? Okay, we bila user masukkan satu key kat keyboard tu, sesuatu event akan berlaku apabila key itu di lepaskan. And then while a key is pressed, maksudnya selagi dia tekan aja, dia tekan aja button control tu, what happen? Ah, something happen lah maksudnya. So it will happen while user hold down a key. While, when the mouse is click on something, kita klik dekat arnab. Arnab tu menari contohnya. Okay, while the mouse is press on something, apa beza press? Kalau klik dia sekali je, lepas tu dia lepas. Kalau press dia tekan lama-lama. So, dekat sini event will occur while the user hold down the mouse button. Tekan aja button tu. Okay. While something is true, mean the condition that you have specified become true, the event will occur as long as the condition, the condition remains true. When something become true means the condition or uh, the event will occur when the condition become true. When a variable changes, maksudnya mungkin daripada nilai 1 dia pergi ke nilai 10 maybe. So the event will occur when the variable changes, the value of the variable. Okay, when the mouse uh, move. Okay. So, the event will allow the user to move an object by clicking and dragging it with the mouse. So, you move object to pakai mouse. Let the arrow keys move the subject. So, gunakan arrow yang dekat keyboard tu atas bawah kiri kanan tu. So, bila you type je arrow-arrow tu, tekan je arrow-arrow tu. So, your object will move. Okay. Let the mouse move the camera. Okay, mouse pun boleh move camera tu. So, by clicking and dragging the mouse. Ataupun mouse orient the camera. Dia bila dia click and drag the mouse, dia direct, the direction or the orientation of the camera will be changing. Okay, so first of all, the world event. So, pergi dekat sini, scene activation ni. So, it allow to change the scene by scene by creating the world scene method. Okay, contohnya, world ni maksudnya apa? Uh, scene method eh, scene uh, macam orang buat video, filem. Okay, memula scene dia dalam rumah. Lepas tu scene dia dekat luar rumah, dekat garage, dekat dalam kereta. Lepas tu scene dia dekat Uh, office. Okay, so scene by scene combine together become lah cerita. So dekat sini pergi dekat at event listener ni kita ada yang first sekali scene activation or time ni. Okay, dia ada dua menu. Oh sorry bukan sepatutnya ni. Dia ada dua menu. At scene activation listener dengan at time listener. So at scene activation listener ni yang first ni dia akan allow 
to call different scene setting. Maksudnya kita activate scene yang lain. So how? Pergi dekat sini. Okay, pergi yang dekat tab scene ni. Awak pilih add scene procedure. Akan keluar pop up ni. Lepas tu apa yang awak buat dah keluar pop up ni. Awak namakanlah scene tersebut. So scene tersebut kita namakan the jump scene. Lepas tu. Bila kita dah set jump scene tu, dia akan appear selepas kita punya my first method. Okay, so dekat sini akan ada, ni nampak tak ni my first method kan? Ha, ni appear the jump scene ni. Nampak? Okay, dalam ni belum ada apa-apa sebab kita belum buat lagi. Baru ada satu prosedur nama jump scene. Ataupun satu method nama the jump scene. Okay. So the new method need to be activated activated or call. So method-method yang kita buat ni. Kalau kita tak panggil, dia takkan jalan. Sama juga macam orang. Okay, saya tak suruh awak buat, awak tak buat. Macam tu lah. Kadang-kadang suruh pun tak buat juga. Okay, lupakan yang tu. So it need to be called. It need to be activated. So how... Pergi balik dekat procedure tu. Okay, list of procedures kan. Okay, awak ada ni kan. Ni, this jump scene ni. Awak pergi tarik dia ke sini. Okay, lepas this my first method. Bawah dia this the jump scene. Okay. Masukkan dia ke dalam. Ni, scene activated. Jangan lupa. Activatekan scene. Scene yang pertama, my first method. Scene yang kedua, the jump scene. So, ni contoh. Kita ada bunny world ni. Bunny world ni, kita punya background, kita rumput. Okay. Yang the jump scene ni, yang second ni yang kita set ni, kita nak dia punya background tukar kepada sandy. Desert. So, apa yang berlaku dalam my first method kita dah buat tu hari sebelum ni. Okay, kita buat yang ni. Awak setkan do in order. This ground set pin kepada sandy desert. Lepas tu do together. Bunny one move down. Dengan bunny two pun move down. Okay. And then yang second tadi. Tadi ada dua kan. So, yang kedua ni, it allow the event to happen during time interval. Contohnya, kita nak continue daripada previous scene kepada uh, scene yang sekarang di mana sebuah bola akan keep on rolling from one side to another side. Okay. For the time elapsed listener, it is expected that the time Interval will elapse and the action will occur. Contohnya dekat sini bola ni pada masa scene um, apa tadi nama tu my first method tadi bola tu kat sini lepas tu masa the jump scene bola tu dah duduk dekat tengah. Okay. So awak letaklah dia punya arahan ni soccer, soccer ball Roll left dengan soccer ball move left. So yang kedua mouse event ni yang biasa kita buat. Klik 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 kan. So it is triggered when the user click the mouse on an object in the world. Okay there are three menu option tiga ni. Kita ada add mouse click on object listener, add mouse click on screen listener, add default model manipulation. So the mouse click event listener will fire when the mouse is click on any object in the scene. Okay, dia mesti click object. So a mouse click on the scene ground ataupun on the atmosphere will be ignored. Jangan klik dekat ground ataupun atmosphere. Mesti klik pada sesuatu objek. 
So there are three functions on the event for the mouse click listener. Okay, tengok dekat sini mouse click ni kan. So ada tiga. Satu yang pertama dia bagi dekat sini e dot get screen distance from left kan. Ayah ni. Okay. So what will happen? Bila kita pilih yang ni. Okay, this event will return a decimal value which is a value number okay of the x coordinate for the object that we click okay kita pilih which so dia akan return coordinate x tu kepada which tu tempat yang kita click tu okay a decimal value double value Kalau kita pilih e dot get screen distance from bottom, lebih kurang sama, tapi dia akan return value decimal untuk nilai y koordinat koordinat y. Okay, kat mana kita klik dia akan return koordinat y. Yang e dot get model at mouse location yang ni di nombor tiga ni nombor dua. Okay, dia akan return link. Link to the click object. Okay, kepada objek yang kita klik tu of the type as model. So, to check whether the user has clicked on the object, we need to use a decision. Yelah nak tahu betul tak betul dia dah klik kan. So, the condition that is tested, kita guna relational as thing. Dan kita pilih equal sign ni. Equality sign ni. Dua sama dengan ni eh. Nampak tu? Dekat mana kita nak pilih ni? Yang left hand side ni. If true is true. Tak nak lah if true is true. If apa is true. So apa tu kita pilih relational as thing equal to. So contohnya dekat sini kita ambil. Okay pilih. Get model at mouse location ni. Okay. Kita masukkan dekat sini. Kita pilih dia equal to this soccer ball eh. So maksudnya betul tak betul kita tekan soccer ball ni. Okay. Kalau betul something happen here. So what is the something that happen? Kita set sebagai this soccer ball turn left. Kita nak supaya bola tu ke kiri. Next is the, ni nombor dua ke? Nombor tiga, sorry. Keyboard events. So the keyboard event will be triggered when user type a key on the keyboard and releases the key. Okay, the first three option, dia ada empat. Tapi the first three ni, satu, dua, tiga ni. They all work in the same way. Sebab either we add a press key, either we press arrow, either we press number. So, Yang E dot is letter ni nampak tak? Dekat key press tu ada empat event. Satu is letter. Is letter akan return boolean value true or false bila dia return true. Kalau kita type sesuatu letter. A, B, C sampai Z. Okay kalau kita type kosong. Dia akan return false. Dia kita type slash. Dia akan return false. So, E is digit. Akan return boolean juga. So, bila dia akan true? True kalau kita press digit. 0 sampai 9. Kalau kita pilih press yang lain, dia akan return false. E dot get key akan return char value. Kita pilih A. Dia akan return char value of the A key yang kita tekan tu. Lepas tu yang last ni E dot is key ni. Dia akan return boolean value. 
bila boolean tu true bila kita pilih uh, button ataupun pilih key yang ditetapkan contohnya betul tak dia nak pilih A kita pun tekanlah A A sama dengan A ha, betul lah so dia akan return true kalau dia suruh pilih A tapi awak pilih X so salah lah dia akan return false ok yang bawah ni pula at object mover for ni ok it allow the object to be moved Using keyboard automatically. Okay. Sama ada up, down, left or right or WASD. Replacement for that. So, dekat nombor 4 ni. Cubalah kita pilih add object mover for the soccer ball. So, soccer ball tu tadi kita boleh lah tekan arrow tu. Kita boleh move dia up, down, left or right. And then the last one is the condition events. So, the position or orientation events category has nine menu options. Okay, but the first eight. Hmm, sampai sini. Okay, the first eight, they are listed in a pack. Okay, ada sembilan kan? So, ada lapan dalam pairing. Yang pertama, add collision start, add collision end. Yang kedua, add proximity enter, add proximity exit. Yang ketiga, view enter, view exit. Yang keempat, occlusion start, occlusion end. So, setiap satu pair dia ada start ataupun enter dan juga end ataupun exit. Ok, ni contoh dia lah. Collision start dan collision end. So, what does it mean by collision? Collision mean... Contohnya kita langgar orang. Kita rasa kan? Tapi dekat dalam komputer macam mana nak rasa? So how to determine that the collision occurs? Mean how to determine that one object physically touches another object? Okay contohnya dekat sini dia bagi contoh. A car driven down the highway might veer off the road and hit a tree. Okay, hence the car is collided with a tree. So, macam mana dekat sini? So, in Alice 3, a collision listener will detect a virtual touch when some portion of one object is in the same location in the world as some portion of another object. So, dia boleh detect. Macam mana dia gunalah position. Okay, same location mestilah position kan? So, dia position yang sama. X dia ke sama, Y dia ke sama. Okay. So, X, Y, Z dia sama maybe. Ha. So, menandakan dia dah terlanggar dengan sesuatu. So, to detect a collision, at least we compute a bounding box shape that encloses an object. Nampak tak ni? Okay. Objek ni ada satu bounding box shape. Surrounding and ostrich ni. So, kalau sesuatu masuk je ke dalam bounding space ni, dia dikatakan telah berlanggar dengan ostrich tersebut. But don't worry, this event will not be covered in our syllabus. Okay, class. So, that is all for the topic. Seven, please continue with the lab for topic seven. Okay. So that is all for today. See you in our next class. Assalamualaikum.